Thank you for calling Carl's Jr. How could I help you today? Oh yeah, I wanted to know if they still had the baby back rib thick burger. Uh, I, I'm sorry, this is guest relations, but I can get someone to get back to you as soon as possible. I, I don't know about specific menu items. Oh, all good. And you know, if they don't have the baby back rib thick burger, I'll just have to make it myself. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we have and what we don't have. I, I apologize. Okay, well, thank you so much for the help. Okay, well, good luck to you. Trevor, do you remember the baby back rib thick burger? No, no, that's... How could you have forgotten the baby back rib thick burger? It was such a large cultural phenomenon. That sounds like a terrible idea. In 2017, Carl Jr. introduces the baby back rib thick burger. They partnered with Bubba Q. Keep track of all this. Carl Jr. partners with Bubba Q, who partnered with Damon John, who partnered with Shark Tank, who was the founder of FUBU. This is all real. So Bubba Q comes on Shark Tank and they have this process for deboning ribs. They're serving order called baby back rib steaks. Isn't that the point of ribs though? Is that they have the bone and then you, you eat them off of the bone? Oh, not on the baby back rib thick burger brought to you by Bubba Q, brought to you by FUBU founder Damon John as featured on Shark Tank. <laughs> so Carl Jr. takes their thick burger on premium artisan bun and then they put a boneless rib steak on top of it. So not only are you eating a burger, but you're eating boneless rib steak. Ironically, they formerly had the Memphis barbecue thick burger, which had pulled pork on it. This is unpulled pork. This is the boneless baby back rib unpulled pork burger brought to you by Barbecue, <laughs> funded by Damon John as seen on Shark Tank. <laughs> why do you know so much about what this? What do you mean why do I know so much? Trevor, this is my entire <laughs> life, buddy. Oh my this God. is my raison d'etre. This is why I exist. I'm I scared. eat thick burgers, therefore I am. I'm really scared right now. <laughs> so we got the pickles, the burger patty, and the buns from Carl's Jr. But the sauce, the onions, and the ribs, we're gonna have to make and debone ourselves. We are the rib deboners. <laughs> So we have to figure out how Bubba debones his ribs and then we have to debone him. Stop saying debone. Join me in deboning these ribs. No, I want to go home. Let's get to deboning, Trevor. Okay. So I got us a couple racks of ribs. What if we could cook ribs so tender they just debone themselves? I'm listening. Trevor, oh. we're going to pressure debone the ribs. I'm going to salt up the water that's not in there. <laughs> I'm just going to put water, salt, and a bunch of liquid smoke. What's liquid smoke? They actually take smoke that is condensed at the top of a dome and then it rains down. Oh, cool. Science. So we got the ribs in the liquid smoke and salt solution. Turn it to soup. <laughs> I just press soup. It's like the microwave. You never actually set it to a time. You just like press 30 seconds until you decide it's enough. I just put it in the Instant Pot and hit soup. Making the bone rib soup. Making the bone soup. <laughs> Watch out, Trevor, okay. stand back. <laughs> I turned it the wrong way because it's facing the wrong way that I normally do it. Oh! Watch out! It's like, no, plug it! Plug it! Is it hot? Oh, it's kind of nice. Wait, wait, breathe in the rib air. <laughs> oh, God. That's disgusting. <laughs> you know how, like, you go to the beach and you, like, I smell hate, the ocean? I hate that I have to stand so close to you right now. <laughs> yeah, wet meat. Hold on. Well, it's sloppy, but it's a rib steak. That looks so unappetizing. It's a little gray. Oh my god, have you ever been to Carl's Jr.? <laughs> unappetizing is their middle name. Oh, look how easily that debones. <laughs> Don't worry about how gray the pork is. Gray <laughs> is Carl's Jr.'s comfort zone when it comes to color palette. Oh, it's so hot. Yeah, yeah, just grab it and rip out the oh. bones. That's a perfectly burger-sized rib steak. I'm proud of the effort, but I'm really... That doesn't look like something I want to put in my mouth. Not yet it doesn't. But Trevor, that's before it's got the Mississippi honey barbecue sauce on there. In fact, I've caught Carl's Jr. lying about what sauce they're putting on burgers. I'm, I wrote a whole thing called The Great Carl's Jr. Thousand Island Conspiracy. I read your article. It's the best article you've ever written. Carl's Jr., when they came out with the Big Carl, which is a Big Mac knockoff, they came out with something called Classic Sauce, which was to mimic McDonald's special sauce. But when they introduced the California Double, which was to mimic In-N-Out's Double Double, they introduced Thousand Island, which of course everyone associates with In-N-Out spread. However, special sauce in McDonald's does not have ketchup in it. In-N-Out's spread does. Carl's Jr. was using the same sauce to mimic Two different competing sauces. So classic the sauce, sauce and Thousand Island sauce were the same at Carl's Jr., but they called them two different things. Yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make those crispy fried onions and then move on to the barbecue sauce. You ready? I'm so ready. Oh, my God, I was born ready. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm more ready than you. It, no, you're not. There's many ways to fry onion. Carl's Jr. has the onion rings on a burger, and they've done, like, fried onion nests before. This yeah. is not that. These are large fried onion petals. So I'm just going to dump a bunch of panko. What is this? Holy wheat! I got tricked! I got tricked into being <laughs> healthy! This is BS, man! So we got the panko in there. How many eggs? Just do like one egg. Just make like a kind of loose batter. I'm gonna cut the panko with some flour, and I'm gonna take some salt and get that in there. And then lid. Oh god, my nemesis. Oh no. 
My favorite part about the Memphis, what is this burger called? The baby back rib thick burger. Yeah. Is that Carl's Jr. used it as one of their first items, like after they cut like the sexed up ads, right? Of like Those Paris were Hilton. so weird. That made me so uncomfortable. Like as a kid, when I was just like watching Nickelodeon, and then all of a sudden there was a scantily clad woman eating a burger that looked way too good. Dude, it was the weirdest thing. I feel like the Carl's Jr. commercials like ruined my ideas on gender from a young age more than anything else in society. I, yeah. I maintain that. And so when they stopped doing those ads, Carl's Jr. is like, we need something else to do. And so they created a false fall character yeah. where they were like, no, 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 the son, Carl Jr., he was doing those ads the whole time. Now we got Carl Sr. and he's a big man, he eats big old rib burgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and doesn't sexualize women. It's genius. 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 Create a fictional person yeah. to take the fall. Exactly. Just some character actor playing Carl Jr. That's my favorite part of corporate accountability. It's like in The Simpsons where Mr. Burns sets up a canary to be the real CEO of the nuclear power plant. <laughs> so you're just gonna dredge those onions in the flour. Okay. Try and get them all coated and like really try and punch the flour into there because the onions are gonna release some moisture. And then we're gonna get them into the batter and then get them into the panko and then we're gonna fry them. Okay. Do you want me to just leave them in the bowl with the panko? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Oh, I didn't go wet hand, dry hand. Never go wet hand, dry hand. <laughs> wet hand, dry hand is a scam. You want your fingers to be completely coated in panko breadcrumbs. That way you can deep fry them afterwards and suck the crispy batter off as a snack. Don't deep fry your fingers at home, okay? Only trained professionals like Josh and Don't myself can do your fingers at home. Yeah, I think these are completely coated. I feel good about these. These are ready to be deep fried. Let me go plug in that fryer. And f fry it up. All right, so then we're just gonna go ahead and Those pull the really onions. Good. These look really good. They're basically a half an onion ring, but yeah. that's what it was on the burger. The little yeah. half onion rings. This is to separate it from the Western bacon burger, yeah, and to separate obviously. it from the Memphis barbecue burger, because this is the baby back rib thick burger, which used to be called the $6 burger, but Carl's Jr. and this entire marketing never thought to adjust for long-term inflation. So now the $6 burger, the idea was that it only cost like $3, but it was to mimic a burger that would cost $6, but then it actually became $6 due to inflation, so then they had to change the name to a thick burger. I'm gonna make some barbecue sauce. Uh -huh. We're gonna give Carl's okay. Jr. the benefit of the doubt that they're not just mixing their Western bacon barbecue sauce with corn syrup, okay. which I think is what they're doing, to be clear. But we're gonna go ahead and make this from scratch and try and mimic the flavors. So you, okay. I loved the baby back rib thick burger for its scientific audacity. Yeah. It's like when you hear about, you know, researchers are like, we're, we're trying to clone babies. It's like, look, I don't know about the moral implication <laughs> of that, but I uh, love the scientific audacity of what you're doing. I don't know if that's a reason to like something. <laughs> that's how I felt about Carl's Jr.'s baby back rib thick burger. It's gonna smell like boiling vinegar in here, but when you're making barbecue sauce, the key things you have to balance are tomato, vinegar, and sugar. Okay. And so this is Mississippi honey barbecue sauce. So we're gonna yeah. get a little scoop of tomatoes in there, and then we're gonna take the honey and we're just gonna slowly drizzle some in. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you're making barbecue sauce, the key is to put like nine times more sugar than you want it. People are like, oh my God, Sweet Baby Ray's is the best barbecue sauce. It is. Why do you think that is? Because there's a lot of sugar in it. 80 sugar. I mean, it's delicious. It's the balance of spice, sugar, and salt. Honestly, barbecue sauce, like let's not sugarcoat it or let's. Okay. Trevor, smell this. Ooh. This is called alcohol. You can drink it when you're older. Oh. Wait, can I even eat this barbecue sauce then? Uh, well, I'll call your dad. We'll have a talk. Okay. A little bit of... What is that? Dried mustard. Dried mustard's good in barbecue sauce. It gives it like oh. a little bit of complexity to it. A little bit of cayenne pepper. Okay. Throw in a little bit of smoked paprika. It's pa gonna kind of add in that like paprika. liquid smoke. Paprika, sorry. Smoked paprika. Okay. So we're just gonna let this all come to a boil. Smell it. Smell myself. <laughs> it smells like vinegar. Ah. Okay. I burnt the nostrils. Oh, that's motion. Uh -oh. Whoa. Oh, no. 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 Oh, you're so supposed to stop there, me from making music. Like, I'm not the fun guy. Whiskey. I'm the one who goes on camera like, oh, Josh is an idiot. Look at him oh do it. Gosh, you just kept whisking. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to let this barbecue sauce reduce for about five minutes. We're going to thicken it up with our cornstarch and then we're good to go on a thick burger. That's a lot of smoke, huh? Yeah, well. That's a lot of smoke. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Trevor, okay. hit those up with some dry rub. Now, most of the time, you dry rub ribs before you cook them. Season them? But we boiled oh. them. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. really cake it on. Oh, that's nice. So we're just gonna spoon some of that sauce on okay. top of the, yeah, the, the yeah. dry rub's kinda cake into the sauce. No, 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 it's okay, this is working. Is there a bone in there? Did you leave a bone in? I don't think I left any. What's that hard part, is that just meat? <laughs> it's just tough ass meat. Listen man, there's a reason this burger <laughs> was discontinued <laughs> in the first place, okay? Yeah. Like, we're fighting such an uphill battle right here. Like, Carl's Jr. couldn't make this successful, why do we think we could? <laughs> 
when Carl's Jr. was serving this, they probably just had it in like a drawer. Yeah. Right? And they would just like pull a, from a rib drawer. <laughs> so let's, from the drawer. We're gonna create our own rib drawer with our deboned ribs. <laughs> now, Dude, that looks good actually. Looks pretty now. good. The sauce got nice and caramelized from all that Mississippi honey. I think we did get honey from Mississippi. Did we? Look at us. Yeah. Who would have thought? Look at us. I'm just gonna lay down a little base of sauce. You know, it's beautiful. And then we're gonna take a couple pickles. Yes. Just lay down a couple. Oh. Here, do you want to pickle your own? Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, yeah, do that. Thank you so much. We're gonna get a nice onion base right there. Just a couple, because the onions are key to this, Trevor. Because yeah. why? Because they're onions. I was hoping you'd say that. Help that me. seems like a good amount. That seems really nice. All right, so now we have our thick burger patties. They're not that thick, no. but they are kind of inexplicably shaped like a sea anemone. The funny thing is, Carl's Jr. is definitely making these patties in a factory, so they literally have a factory machine that is perfectly cut out to make irregular looking burger patties, which to me is the most fascinating thing in the world. And that's not to mention the painted on grill marks. That said, I love me a Carl's Jr. burger. You get the flame broiled taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fan. Grill marks up. Grill marks up. I, I gotta say, I was really not excited about this at all. I'm starting to get excited. Well, just think about the anticipation. Like, we have a pretty good burger built. Yeah. We're about to take what is a separate meal of barbecue ribs and put that on top of our already separate meal burger. Heck yeah. Trevor, this stuff gets Heck me yeah, wet, buddy. Yeah. You know what? Can we take that again? There's just a nice rib steak. Thank you. I'm gonna rib steak up my burg. <laughs> now we just gotta crown it, and we gotta put it in what, Trevor? The mount, our mounts. Oh yeah, in a box. Trevor, we brought this burger back from the past. Yeah! It's back from the past! Back from the past! Back from the past, it was in the past, now it's back! It's back from the past. I'm gonna take it, and I'm just gonna try and kind of mash it down. This is a tall burger. It's yeah, a no, thick <laughs> burger, in you, fact. You could say it is a thick burger. That's a heck of a sensation. Someone put in my, do you have, think about it, you have multiple meals inside your mouth right now. The most interesting part is how many zones there are in the rib, because you get some fatty mm -hmm. pockets, mm -hmm. you get some lean pockets, not a sponsor, lean pockets. What are your final thoughts about this burger? Because it is a taste sensation. Look how mm -hmm. gigantic that is. It's very protein packed. Mm -hmm. I'm not against it. The ribs go good with the burger and the barbecue sauce that you made is really good. So despite all that happened while making it. I don't know if I just enjoy it because it just tastes like meat and barbecue sauce. Maybe like a boneless rib sandwich would be a better go. Mm -hmm. But you're a burger restaurant. You're doubling down on your burgers. They're thick burger. They've invested so much money into that marketing. They're running with it. They need to bring back the boneless rib burger. We are just going to keep ascending into more scientifically audacious fast food menu items. Carl Jr., bring back the debone baby back rib thick burger sandwich. <laughs> the world is ready for thicker burgers and thicker deboned ribs. And if you think Carl's Jr. should bring this back, tweet at Carl's Jr. using hashtag past food. Thank you so much for joining us in the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes of Past Food every Tuesday, new recipes coming at you every Thursday. And don't forget to check out A Hot Dog is a Sandwich every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Make your kitchen more mythical with these stickers and magnets. Now available at mythical.com.